This video is supported by Brilliant.org. As many of you know, I have a reservation for a Model 3, and today I can announce at long last, I still don't have it. It's, it's not here yet. Look, I'll be honest, it's been a really frustrating process, but I'm trying to just be cool about it. I'm trying to just remind myself that once I get the car, I'll be perfectly happy with it and I'll be totally excited and I'll look back at all the rants and tantrums that I threw and think, dude, what's wrong with you? I'll just be so embarrassed of myself. So I'm trying to just lay off, be cool, and just not talk about it. Just don't talk about it. So anyway, here we go. EVs are changing the world, from self-driving technology to longer range. Um, I'm just saying, if they would just give me a time frame, you know, if they would just tell me when it's going to be here, that's fine. I, I, don't, I can wait a couple of months, that's fine. I just, do, you know, just stop stringing me along. In the next few years, more car brands will be releasing electric vehicles than ever before. And I'm just saying, if they send an email that says your Model 3 is ready, that makes you think that you're going to be getting your car soon, right? I mean, is that a weird assumption on my part? With new advancements in battery technology, EVs are starting to get the same range as gas cars. And as soon as, you know, of course, everybody wants to see it. So every time I turn around, it's like, do you have your Tesla yet? Do you have your Tesla yet? And I'm just like, no. And people are like, oh, dude, that's stupid. And of course, there's always that one guy that's like, oh, see, I told you, idiot. And I'm like, shut up, dad. So today we're going to look at exactly where we are with electric vehicles, what's coming around the corner, and how it's going to change the world we live in. I mean, why? It's something I say on this channel over and over and over and over again, but we are living in one of the most transformative times in human history. Take the telephone, for example. The telephone was invented in 1876, and for over a hundred years, we dialed the phone using a rotary dial. This was a mechanical device that only went digital in the 1980s when we got push button phones. Even after phones went mobile, all you could do was make phone calls on them for the next 20 years or so until 2007 with the release of the iPhone when smartphones became the mainstream. I mean, smartphones did exist before the iPhone, but it was mostly just for like gadget files and wealthy professionals and stuff. But after the iPhone, everyone had a smartphone. So much so that 10 years later, we don't even use the word smartphone anymore. It's just the phone. For a hundred years, the phone was just a device to talk to people. Now it was a whole new way of experiencing the world. Now many are making the argument that the Tesla Model 3 is creating an iPhone moment for the automotive industry, that it's that breakthrough product that's going to change our idea of what a car can be. I think it's too soon to tell if the Model 3 is going to be that product or not, but I do think that we are at the beginning of a major paradigm shift. Because again, we have a mechanical device, roughly 100 years old, that over the last 20 years or so has become increasingly computerized. Now along comes a car that's basically a computer on wheels that you can control with your phone, that can drive you, and is more powerful than most muscle cars. And oh yeah, it uses no gas whatsoever. This could be that killer product that changes everybody's perceptions about electric vehicles. But one great product does not a revolution make. You know, historically there have been several roadblocks to EV adoption. The reason this is a revolution is because those roadblocks are crumbling and fast. And the first roadblock is range. I'm starting with range because it's actually not an issue at all, and it hasn't been for a while, but people still think it is. And really, that's a fair misunderstanding, because for the vast history of electric vehicles, about 90 miles on a charge was about the best you could get out of these things. That's like a quarter as far as the worst gasoline cars can go, so it's understandable that people would be worried about that. But since the Model S EVs have been using lithium-ion batteries, these have a much higher energy density, and there's several models out there now that get over 200 miles per charge. The Tesla Model 3 actually gets over 300 miles of charge. And of course, every other day there's a report of a new battery technology that could get 500 miles or 1,000 kilometers. There are a few things in this world that are innovating as fast as battery technology. So chances are in 5 to 10 years, electric cars are going to get just as much range as gas cars. Maybe even more. But here's why the range issue isn't really an issue. Because it never really was an issue. Drivers in the U.S. average about 40 miles a day. Now that is an average, there are some people that drive much more than that, but there are also, you know, people like me that work from home and go a whole week without ever leaving the house. Or showering. Or talking to another human being. The vast majority of our driving is in our daily commutes, and the average American commutes about 16 miles every day. So even back when we only got 90 miles of charge, that was more than enough to handle like 95% of your driving, especially if you live in urban areas. Most households in the U.S. have at least two cars. So you could very easily have an electric car that can be your around town car, and then a gas car for long road trips. 
If you live in a home with more than one car, which is 126 million households in the United States, this has literally never been a problem for you. But now that electric cars are regularly getting 300 miles to a charge, road tripping in EVs is now a thing. Because the cars aren't just holding more of a charge, they're also charging faster than ever before. So there's three levels of charging. Level one is your regular 120 volt outlet like you would have in any room of your home. Level two is a 240 outlet like you would plug your dryer into. And level three, well that's industrial strength. Level 3 chargers and Tesla superchargers can push more than 400 volts, which can charge most cars up to 80% in about 15 minutes. It does take another 15 minutes to charge up to 100%. It slows down after 80% to prevent damaging the batteries. And this is where people freak out and say, oh my god, I gotta stand there for 30 minutes? That's ridiculous. And yeah, that would be ridiculous to stand there for 30 minutes. That's why they always put these near restaurants and shopping centers. I mean, you have to keep in mind the context here. If you're stopping to charge your car, you've been driving for at least 250 miles. That's like three hours. You're probably gonna wanna stop and stretch your legs and have a bite to eat. In fact, most EV owners say that taking road trips in their EV is actually more relaxing because it kind of forces you to stop and take a break and chill out and de-stress a little bit. It's like a break from that constant stimulus of driving. In fact, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration recommends that we take a break every two hours when driving. It's something we should probably all be doing anyway. Not to mention, with no engine noise, a quieter ride makes for a more relaxing trip. So I've heard. I don't have mine yet. Did I mention that? I don't believe that electric cars are the future of transportation. They just are. It's not a question of belief. It's very obvious. The rate of growth now is exponential, I believe is the correct scientific term. I mean, it's going to take 10 years. It's not like next week but it's clearly going to happen. Uh, they are less environmentally harmful than uh, internal combustion engines. There's no argument about that. Those, all those arguments are boring and spurious and FUD, uh, part of a deliberate process of spreading fear, uncertainty and doubt. They're just better. It's better technology. Very simple explanation of how much better it is. For every dollar you put in a car, about 25 cents moves you along when you're using fossil fuels. For every dollar of electricity you put in a car, about 80 cents moves you along the road. So they're more efficient. They're a more sensible use of the resources we have on the planet. We'll all be driving electric cars in the next 10 to 15 years. It's just, that's just what's gonna happen. And electric buses, and trucks, and delivery vans, and bicycles, and even electric airplanes. Ooh. The whole lack of infrastructure argument is, is always one of my favorites, actually, because whenever I hear people say there's no place to charge your car, I'm always like, what are you talking about? I see like six places here in this room. Any building that has electricity is a place where you can charge your car. Yes, it charges very slow from a regular outlet, but your car spends 90% of its life parked. You can be charging that whole time. Almost all the charging that you do is at home or at your place of work. You're literally just parking your car. It takes no extra time out of your day. It's way more convenient than going to a gas station. And I know you might be saying, sure, if you own a home or work in an office, that's great for you, but I you know, live in an apartment, I park in the street, I work in a restaurant, what the hell am I supposed to do? And to you, I say, yes, you're absolutely right. The infrastructure right now is not optimal for you at the moment, but that's changing fast. The potential for electric is that every single parking lot could have multiple charging points. So you can charge up whenever you want, whenever you need it. You know, when you're at work or shopping for groceries or at the mall, watching a movie, whatever. The infrastructure for electric is already 90% there. All we have to do is just Tap into it. There's no reason why every light pole in every parking lot couldn't have a charge station on it. And all this is gonna happen because setting up a charging station is like a thousand times easier than setting up a gas station. I mean, think about all that you have to do to put up a gas station. You gotta buy land, for one thing. You gotta build a building. You gotta carve out of the ground giant holes to put the gas tanks underneath. Then you gotta put up the parking spots above. You gotta have working pumps to get into the people's cars. And then you have to continually supply those tanks with gas the entire time that gas station exists. And that's actually something that people don't talk about a lot when they talk about the gas versus electric thing is how much goes into just getting that gas into your car in the first place. All the drilling and refining is just the start. Then they've got to put it on boats and trains and big massive trucks just to get it to the gas station. That's a lot of expense and energy used and yes, pollution made before it even gets to your car. Meanwhile, an electric station can go up in any existing parking lot, take up about as much space as a parking meter, and it's a one-time thing. You don't have to constantly keep resupplying it. You just set it up and make money. 
which is why Tesla has been able to put up 10,000 of them. As more people start driving electric, you'll start seeing more and more of these charging stations because there is money to be made there. And by the way, as people start seeing charging stations everywhere, they're gonna be more inclined to start looking into electric vehicles. The EV charging infrastructure could be the next gold rush, and the company that corners that market is gonna make a killing. There's already a few companies out there uh, trying to get ahead on that. There's EVgo, ChargePoint, Blink, Volta, and of course, Tesla. Of course, those are just some plucky startups. You may be thinking that's not indicative of a shift in the industry or anything. Well, there is a company that I didn't mention a second ago, British Petroleum. British Petroleum, BP, one of the biggest oil companies in the world, recently bought ChargeMaster, which is the biggest charging network in the UK. Actually, they're now called BP ChargeMaster. When oil companies start getting out of the action, you know something's starting to happen. In the near future, filling up your car is not something you'll have to go to a place to do. You won't have to go to a gas station. The world will be your gas station. Charging is just a thing you'll do when you know you're gonna be at a place for a while. In fact, I feel like in 20 years, kids will look at a picture like this and be so confused. They'll be like, they had electricity. Why were they using gas? So the Model 3, the iPhone moment has arrived. I mean, this is the hard data that just gets me so excited about Tesla. Let's get right into it. These are the numbers reported every month by Inside EVs, which is an awesome resource. They're not official numbers from the automakers, but they're pretty close to being accurate. So this is what I follow. Model 3 sold 14,250 units in July. This was more than a double from the previous month, by far a record. I mean, just a breakout month in terms of sales for the Model 3. You can't spin these numbers any other way than this is phenomenal growth and execution for Tesla. If we take a look at this on a quarterly basis, you can see the rapid growth of Model 3 deliveries. Now, what I'm estimating for Q3 is deliveries or sales of about 57,500 units. Now, in their quarterly letter, Tesla said that they would be building about between 50 to 55,000 cars, delivering a little bit more than that. Um, if we take a look at the overall US plug-in market, you can see pretty strong growth for the past five years. Through July, already sales of 152,000 cars. This is this is the news that gets me you know, so excited. Electric vehicle sales are taking off and going mainstream. This is awesome news. Here, if you'll take a look at the comparison of the first seven months of the year in 2016, 2017, 2018, you can see that we're you know, showing tremendous growth here in 2018. Um, now I'm estimating for the full year, we're looking at about EV sales of around 300,000 units. This is 50% growth for the segment awesome numbers. This chart, once again, is basically all you need to know. Um, I think they're only going to continue to scale deliveries from here. This is a phenomenal milestone. This is over 50% market share in the midsize premium sedan market and the electric vehicle market. So a tremendous month in July for the Model 3. Um, I'm going to make another episode in August with those sales numbers. So stay tuned for that. But let's talk price. Price is still the biggest roadblock for most people. These cars ain't cheap. Look, I'll level with you. If you're struggling right now and your car's on its last legs and you just need the cheapest thing you can find that's not too embarrassing to get from one place to another, that thing is probably not going to be an electric vehicle. Although I did find a used Fiat 500e for $6,200 online, just saying. But if you are in the market for a new car, the next few years have more new options at all price ranges than we've ever seen before. In the last year, almost every automaker has released or announced that they're releasing an electric car for their lineup. Chevy released their Bolt crossover in 2016. Nissan released their second generation Leaf, which actually gets double the mileage of their first generation Leaf. BMW released the i8 and the i3. And this year we're seeing electric cars from Hyundai, Kia, Audi, Jaguar, and Aston Martin with a Porsche and another BMW scheduled for 2019. Also, Volvo announced that in 2019, their entire fleet would go hybrid or electric. And Nissan's planning 20 new EVs by the year 2023. This is a big deal. Now, I know we talk about Tesla a lot around here and understandably so, they're doing cool things, but this shift in the automotive industry, I feel like doesn't get talked about enough because this is the real game changer. More people building EVs means more innovation, more scale and lower cost. Every new technology starts out really expensive and goes down in price over time. Early cell phones were a bit pricier too. As I mentioned just a minute ago, the second generation Leaf gets twice the range of the first one at the same price. More value for the dollar. We've seen this movie before. So you hear the number 35,000 uh, thrown out a lot when you're talking about the price of electric cars. Um, it's kind of the holy grail is to get an EV out around the mid 30s. And there's a reason for that because when you factor in the true cost of ownership of a gas car, things like getting your oil changed all the time, regular tune-ups, regular service, belt replaced, transmissions, stuff like that. And oh yeah, the cost of gas. A $35,000 electric car is actually 
less expensive than a moderately priced gas car. 2-Bit DaVinci actually did a great video where they showed that the true cost of ownership over eight years of a $35,000 Tesla Model 3 is about the same as a new Honda Civic. It's just gone to show there's a huge demand out there for an alluring electric car. And people like me are willing to pay a premium for that uh, not just because of the environment, because it's an awesome car and we want to, you know, play a part in this transition to a more sustainable future. EVs are our future and they are actually going to be here much quicker than most people think. If you check out the Bloomberg New Energy Finance Report, their EV outlook that they publish each year, their latest forecast shows that the sale of electric vehicles increasing from a record 1.1 million worldwide in 2017 to 11 million in 2025 and then surging to 30 million in 2030 as they become cheaper to make and maintain and everything over an internal combustion engine vehicle, an ICE vehicle, as we say. There's another bit of data, though, that I thought would be also interesting to include, and that is from the recent Tesla earnings call where they listed the top five vehicles that people are trading in for the Tesla Model 3. What it is is five vehicles that are 150% cheaper on average than a Model 3 is. So that alone tells you there is an intense desire and passion for these vehicles. And so the interesting thing about that to me is that this isn't even the biggest part of the segment that Tesla is going after. Tesla is going after the BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Here you have a Toyota Pre a Honda Civic, a Honda Accord, a Nissan Leaf. The majority of people that are trading in their vehicles for Model 3s are coming from Hondas, which is wild. So I think with companies like Tesla leading the way, making these cars mainstream is going to be the spark that ignites the fire, which then allows all the other automakers to make really compelling options for folks that probably are a bit cheaper and a little less feature rich, but nonetheless, they are electric. At that point is when I think everyone is really going to kind of realize how much better these vehicles are for moving us along and getting us you know, to and from work, et cetera. And this is what the possible EV future looks like. With increased battery storage, we could get just as much range or even more so than a gas car. They could serve as mobile computers and mobile energy storage with ubiquitous charging options wherever you go. And with autonomous driving solutions, you could even make money with your car by using it as a service for other people. And just like today, we don't say smartphones anymore. I think in the next five to 10 years, electric cars will stop being electric cars. They'll just be the car. A car that, much like a smartphone, will have capabilities that we can't even think of right now. And it's gonna completely change our relationship with our cars. In the future, we will all be Knight Rider. The innovations that are gonna power our EV revolution are already here. Smart grids, battery technology, solar panels, that kind of thing. And if you wanna get caught up on that and be ready for the future that's ahead of us, a great place to start is Brilliant.org. Brilliant has an entire course on machine learning, which gives you the basics of how autonomous cars can get around and smart grids can work, and they explain it in a way that makes sense to your head brain. Brilliant's courses don't just pound you in the face with facts and figures, they walk you through puzzles and problem solving challenges so that you can contextualize it in a way that makes sense in your own brain. This means you'll understand it better and you'll be able to apply it to other things in your life because it makes more sense to you. It's kind of brilliant. And they have courses that cover all kinds of topics, from the physics of the everyday to games of chance. You can actually get better at gambling with Brilliant. And if you go to brilliant.org slash answers with Joe, you can get free access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And the first 200 people that sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses you can get 20% off your subscription for life. I love Brilliant. They've been a great supporter of this channel. I think you will too. Brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down in the description. Big thanks to Brilliant, and as always, a huge thanks to the Answer Files on Patreon that are helping to support this channel and building an awesome community. Got some new members of the tribe. Let me try to get their names out real quick. We've got Fabricate here, real name. Uh, Sean Rothery, Brian Lewis, Paul Fitzpatrick, Byron Robb, Dick Strand, Stuart Christopher Brownlee, Paul Tucker, Lord Visigoth, uh, Mary Hudson, Mark Maselli, Christopher Stanson, uh, Keith E. Cooper, Zesty, Nelson Tamayo and Dale Kirkwood. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get access to cool stuff other people don't get access to, and just join a really awesome community, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. By the way, do you find EVs sexy? Then you can get this shirt and many other really cool shirts at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Please like and share this video if you liked it, and if this is your first time here, please check out some of my other stuff, because you might like those too, and if you do, hit subscribe, you'll be one of the first people to see it every Monday. All right, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. You guys 
go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.